I'm bringing on director of recruiting for On3, Chad Simmons, because it is time to focus on the 2024 recruiting class. So why not start at the top with the number one player in the country, Dylan Rayola. He was committed to Ohio State for much of the summer and into the fall. He decommitted and reopened his recruitment about six weeks ago. Chad Simmons was able to sit down with Dylan Rayola this week for an in-depth conversation. So naturally, Chad, I want to start this with asking, why did he decommit from Ohio State? I think like a lot of guys, Josh has kind of felt he rushed the decision a little bit. You know, when he when he committed to Ohio State, he was coming off really a whirlwind of visits to Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, USC, some other schools sprinkled in there, all like one weekend after another. Uh, he thought he had that feeling about Ohio State. Maybe at the time he did, but as time wore on, uh, he realized that he just wasn't 100% in. He wasn't ready to shut things down completely. Wanted to give himself some time to re-examine, re-explore uh, the different options, different schools, and that's where we're at now. Okay, so how does Rayola sound about his recruitment? You had a chance to talk to him. Who did he tell you the, who was in it for him, the main competition? Well, I'll say this first. He made it pretty clear. It's why, in his words, wide open. So he does not want to rule out anyone yet, or even lump it, you know, just a few schools together as those quote unquote lead schools. But the ones he did say he's talking to the most right now, I guess, would be Georgia, Nebraska, Oregon, and USC. Those are four uh, that he said just have been very consistent over the last month or so, uh, and there's strong communication there. What does he like about each program? Tell me a little bit about the four. I mean, I probably should start with Nebraska. Obviously, dad played there, uncle coaches offensive line there now. We know, obviously, last Friday, the first day coaches could hit the road in January, Matt Rule stopped by Chandler High School to check on Dylan Rayola. So we know there's a strong Nebraska connection. Like Rayola told me uh, here recently, Nebraska's like family to my family. Just that, uh, that culture, the people there, uh, there's strong connections there. They were actually back to see him uh, on Wednesday this week as well. So Nebraska's really working hard uh, to make themselves a true contender for Dylan Rayola. I think with Oregon, uh, he set it off pretty well with the new OC, Will Stein, uh, likes the creative style, his offensive scheme. Uh, he wants to get up there maybe and visit at some point this spring uh, to kind of get some face time with the new OC at Oregon. Uh, but he's already been there. He knew Dan Lenning from his time in Oregon. He visited Oregon uh, back in the spring before he committed to Ohio State. So Oregon seems to be a player in this as well. And then, of course, USC, Lincoln Riley, mm -hmm. uh, his QB track record, kind of like what Dylan says, speaks for itself. You know what he does? Uh, obviously, with Caleb Williams here in year one at USC, he had him a year ago at Oklahoma, what he did with other guys before that at OU, the offensive scheme, how they throw the ball, but mainly the QB development, I think, with Lincoln Riley puts USC in the thick of this. And then Georgia, who at one time was probably the front runner for Dylan before he committed to Ohio State. They were the first school to offer. I know Kirby Smart, Todd Munkin, both going in to see him or check on him, I should say, next week, uh, the final week they can be on the road. Um, he's been to Athens four, five, six times. He knows the program, the community, and obviously Georgia's winning. Uh, he loves the offensive scheme and style of Todd Munkin as well. How good is he? I know he's number one overall. I know that. But tell me, how good is Dylan Rayola? You know, anytime you're ranked, I think at the top, obviously that kind of speaks for itself. You know, I think the talent's there. He's got great size, good arm strength. I think what sets Dylan apart, just for me, uh, being around him over the last whatever year, year and a half, and watching him work and compete, it's just those intangibles, man. Obviously, his dad played in the NFL for 10 plus years. You know, he communicates with guys like Matthew Stafford. He works with guys that play in the NFL. He, he's always wanting to learn. He's not focused on, you know, a typical, you know, high school student as, as a junior in high school about, you know, girlfriends, social media. Uh, his focus is football, his craft. What can make him different? What can make him the best? What can set him up for success? So to me, uh, obviously, he checks the box with arm strength, his size, football IQ. But I think that work ethic and the intangibles, extending plays outside the pocket. And he was a big-time baseball player as well, so he was athletic. So uh, the little things, I think, set him apart. When do you – okay, first, what's the next major development in his recruitment, and when do you think he makes a final decision? 
I think the next development would be when he takes visits and who he visits. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, obviously I think he's going this week to watch the Polynesian Bowl in Hawaii. He's got some connections there in Hawaii, his family roots uh, with his dad being from Hawaii. Uh, so he's actually going back to Hawaii to watch that. So it looks like this weekend definitely uh, he'll not be anywhere taking trips. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked. Now, nothing's set right now if he does take a trip uh, at the end of January. Um, that, that's been discussed, I think, but different schools. So nothing's really getting set right now. But I think for sure in the spring, the plan is once, you know, obviously February being a dead month, once March picks back up, uh, I think you'll see Dylan hit the road. That'll be the next development. Again, where he goes, how many times he sees different schools, and how much time does he take on the road to make that decision? You think this decision comes before his senior season? I do. I'd be shocked if he goes into his senior year uncommitted, Josh. I mean, I think he, he obviously he's been around, you know, he's been on trips, he's been to games. Uh, obviously, he spent the fall being committed to Ohio State. We did not mm-hmm. take any game day trips outside of Columbus um, in the fall, but he's been to a lot of the same schools that are on his list right now. Um, he, he's already been there likely multiple times. So uh, obviously Michigan's been in this week. You know, Oklahoma's been in. Arizona State's trying to get him on campus. New schools are trying to get in the mix and trying to get him on campus. But the ones he talked about being consistent talking with right now, he's been there and done that. So obviously he wants to meet new coaches like Stein at at Oregon, Matt Rule, the head coach at Nebraska. Uh, I think he'll take a few trips and then likely, likely wrap this thing up. And based on talking to him, just from his tone, do you think that this is going to be his last commitment? Does this one stick? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously he thought when he committed to Ohio State that would stick too. So anything's possible. But, yeah, I think he, you know, his words to me, he kind of learned from that, rushed things a little bit, um, maybe was feeling 85 90% Ohio State, but not quite 100% but went through with the commitment. So I do think he'll take all the time he needs this time with him, his family, his support group, whatever visits are needed, whatever Zoom calls, whatever phone calls. I think he'll make sure every box is checked this time before he makes that call. All right, Chad, two weeks still left in the 23 class, but the 24 class is already heating up. Thanks for keeping us updated on Dylan Rayola's recruitment. Yep, anytime. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.